Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And today we're ranking Iron Man 3. Download our ranking sheet and score the movies yourselves in our description. We have a link down there for that. So now if you've checked out this movie, you're probably asking yourself, how is Iron Man 3 the best Iron Man movie? Our first category is lead male, lead female, likability. I gave Pepper Potts a 3. She was a badass in this movie. For me, both of these characters earned a spot of 4. For Tony Stark, I gave him a 4. I want this guy in my, my group of friends now. I love their love of each other. I think that Pepper Potts and Tony Stark both come across as people of integrity, bravery. Why wouldn't I want them in my inner circle of friends? Next is lead male and lead female bangability. I'm going to start with Tony Stark. Love the guy in this one. Uh, you know, really likable, but still not bangable for me. I gave, I gave him a zero. And for Pepper Potts... Uh, Pepper Potts went up in this one. She got a four. This is the highest score I've ever given a lead female character. Pepper Potts has come up in the world. I actually give her a score of one. Which is, if I got drunk enough, I mean, who knows? Maybe this is my I kissed a girl and I liked it moment. Pepper Potts was a lot more confident in this one, which, as we've said in the past, is always sexy. Her personality has caught up with how beautiful she is physically. I, I think that's a, a very fair critique of her. Um, I don't know if that's critique, a, an assessment. Compliment, I think. Assessment. Assessment is what I mean to say. It's a very fair assessment of her. Um, <laughs> I, Maybe you're just as beautiful on the inside as you're on the outside. Hmm, that's a fair critique. Thank you. <laughs> I'll let you buy me a drink, young man. So Tony Stark got a score of five, which is, this is more than a bang. But he's got the highest score that I've given a guy so far. And yeah. you were convinced that that would go to Captain America. I was. I was convinced that would go to Captain it America. It to Tony Stark. It is the first time I ever believe that Tony Stark is not the number one person in Tony Stark's world. And it makes him insanely sexy. Because he's already a genius. And he's already good looking. And he's already a superhero. So if he can set his ego aside, kind of Mr. Perfect. Next up is lead male, lead female, relatability. Okay, so I just gushed over how awesome these two characters are. So as you might suspect, that might make them a little bit hard to relate to. And it does. I gave both of these characters a score of one. I gave Pepper Potts a two on this one. For Tony Stark, to me, this is when Tony Stark becomes a superhero. The guy is just too smart and too perfect where I don't think anyone like this really exists. Let's talk about the villain. Aldridge Killian. How many people does the villain's end goal affect? His end goal isn't super original. He wants power. He wants money. So I gave him a score of three. I think it's a world's health and happiness that he is affecting. I said it was two. I said it was America's health and happiness. When you're selling weapons, you're going to sell it to the highest bidder, which means you're open season for the entire World Terrorism Organization to come and buy from you. How strong is the villain compared to the hero? For this, I gave it a score of three because I was considering Aldrich Killian versus Tony Stark. And I think Aldrich Killian is stronger. I just didn't agree. I thought, I thought it was a two. I thought he was equal to the hero. Do you care about the villain? I gave him a two again. I gave him a score of three. I hate this guy. I want to hurt him. I want him to hurt. Showing Tony Stark, his girlfriend, in torture just to torment him. And then on top of that, when Tony Stark is desperately trying to catch Pepper Potts before she falls in the final scene, and he misses her. And the first thing that Aldrich Killian says is, I would have caught her. Right then, dude, you are dead to me, and I want Tony Stark to kill you. Villain bang ability. I do not want to bang Aldrich Killian in the slightest. Zero. Yeah, it gets a zero for me too. Side, Side characters. characters. So, we have quite a few in this film, which is rather yeah. unusual for an Iron Man movie. So the characters that we have are Maya. She is the botanist. Harley. The adorable kid. The Mandarin. Happy, who is, of course, Happy. We know him from before. Jarvis. And we, of course, have Rhodey. For Maya and the botanist, I gave her a one. Maya and Rhodey both got a score of one, which is that the plot has some holes without them. I can't believe I gotta defend Rhodey in this one, all right? So I haven't really liked him in any of the other Iron Man films. No, you've trashed him pretty much. Yeah! Uh, but for I, get, I thought he was two. I thought I made the character more likable and relatable. I could see an argument for a two. Oh, there's no argument. So next up is Harley. Harley is the adorable kid, and he obviously brings some humor and a great deal of heart to the story. I gave him a score of two. I gave him a two as well. He provides humor in this one, but I don't think he's really the funny one. Like He kind of just like sets up Tony Stark to be funny. Yeah. I love the fact that Tony Stark 
treats him like a buddy of his uh, instead of just treating him like a kid. He jokes around with him. He busts his balls. It sounds so wrong to say bust his balls when you're talking Sorry, about sorry, 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 sorry. He busts his chops. Happy and Jarvis both gave, uh, gave him a two. I really feel like Happy's just there to show us that Tony Stark can have a best friend. Happy is what gets Tony Stark really involved with the Mandarin and what makes it personal. On to the Mandarin. The Mandarin got a three. He was hilarious in this. Ben Kingsley was great. Mwah. To think of like the great and powerful Oz and then you meet the man behind behind the curtain. I mean, that's kind of what this guy is. He's the man behind the curtain and he's a joke. I know some people that love the comic books were upset that the Mandarin was kind of used as uh, a decoy and was just used as kind of, you know, for jokes. And I get that. But you know what? The cool thing is that they're bringing the Mandarin back and they're bringing that real Mandarin and he's going to be in the Shang-Chi movie. So next up is plot. So I think we were in agreement on plot. Yeah. It was deliciously unexpected. You don't know what's going to happen next. And it's great. You needed to stay engaged with this movie. You needed to stay involved in it. You couldn't tune out and check your phone because you might miss something great. On to female empowerment. What role do women play in this film? So we have this scientist, Maya, right? This brilliant scientist, cutting edge of uh, regeneration. And they have her sitting by her laptop in her lingerie right after sleeping with Tony Stark. Because that's what every brilliant scientist does. Oh, excuse me. I need to put my bra on to sit at my computer. Like, come on, it's ridiculous. But Pepper Potts, she saves the day. Literally saves the day. Pepper Potts got this a three on female empowerment. I give her a score of four. It's definitely Pepper Potts who saves the day. A woman in this film is the true hero. I think the whole Iron Man film up until this point, and I think the moral of the story in this movie is to set them up as equals. She is the one who takes as much of a role in trying to become an, a helper and an equal she to Iron Man. A hero. She's not the hero. All right. This is still this is still Iron Man's movie. So he's he still gets he can't he can't make it's not Pepper Potts. It's Iron Man three. Next up is soundtrack. I gave soundtrack a one because Pepper Potts didn't say it. No, I gave soundtrack a one. I actually felt that it was kind of a driving force behind some of the scenes, which I think has become a calling card for the Iron Man films in general. It's gotten more and more as it goes on but they really seem to select a great soundtrack for these Iron Man movies. So I gave it a score of three. Because I had such a high expectation for this. And there's no ACDC. I can't, I can't give it a high score. I'm sorry, I just can't. Humor. This movie was hilarious. Like in Avengers, they really nailed the dialogue and the tone of the film was yes. really great. So humor for me got a 37. I gave it a 38. Next up is visual effects. I said it was a three. I said definitely big screen worthy. Uh, once again, the technology that they showcase in these Iron Man movies was fantastic. Marvel was not holding back in this movie. You have the destruction of Iron Man's home. You have people who breathe fire, explode, and regenerate. I gave it a score of four. It was pretty flawless. Love story. Now, in the past, the Pepper Potts and Tony Stark relationship has not been very convincing for me. I didn't think I would ever give a Marvel movie this high of a score, but I gave it a four. I gave it a score of four. If these two ever break up, there's gonna be some ugly crying and I'm gonna write a letter to Marvel. The return of Pepper Potts and Tony Stark's banter was very key to this, but I also genuinely believed their love for each other. And I genuinely believed that they were equals in the relationship. They, they built off of everything they've done from the first Iron Man movie, you know, through Avengers and now uh, this is the crowning achievement for the love story so far. Dialogue. I gave it a score of three. I said it was sharp, clever, and witty. Dialogue, I gave it three. Action sequences. So we agreed that there were five main action mm -hmm. sequences in this, and I gave it a score of three, which is that I couldn't believe my eyes, and in a good way. Uh, I gave it a three as well. All the action sequences were different, and they were original. I love the MacGyver way that he goes to the hardware store and has to come up with a bunch of different yes. tricks and tools in order to uh, infiltrate the Mandarin's base. The the heart of Tony Stark, the root of his character, is not a man in a suit. It is a genius. And that's, you know, it really brought us home to Iron Man's roots. Yeah. Speaking of heart, that is our final category. The love story is good. The heart's going to be good. And I gave this a three. I said I got a little misty-eyed. I gave this a score of two. When you think Pepper Potts dies and... You just see how... How gut-wrenchingly devastated Iron Man was, 
It got me. I bought it. Oh, that's that's nothing. Like she's gonna come right back. It's gonna be fine. I know that Pepper Potts didn't really die, but I still am affected by it. If you were falling. And I couldn't catch you. And, you know, like, that's like, I've had nightmares about that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, seeing his look on his face, it's like, I'm like, like yep, that's, I, I believe that. I, that 100%. My final score for Iron Man 3 was 106. I got 112. But it did lose some points. Um, you know, it wasn't as, as flawless as Avengers was, where Avengers didn't lose any points. Uh, it lost minus five points for just kind of absurdity of some of the moments. Guy Pierce's character, I'll just kill him, breathes fire. Now, they make a joke out of it. He goes, you know, uh, Rhodey goes, oh, you, you breathe fire? Okay. But it's one of those things where if you know you're being so absurd that you got to make a joke about it. We never needed that moment. It seemed really just there to set up a joke for Rhodey. He never does it again. The impact of it is not anything that has a significant outcome. And that's true. He never does it again. It's kind of the, uh, if you show a gun in a movie, you know, you better end up using that gun later on. If you show this guy breathing fire... In the movie, you better bring that up in some way where, like, okay, you know, we showed you that he's breathing fire because later on, like, this is this is setting something up later. Minus five more for failure to fully engage the audience. So our final score is now a 99 for Iron Man 3. So next up, we have Thor Dark World. And check out our podcast for a more in-depth analysis of Iron Man 3. Because we all respect that you don't have 45 minutes to give us when you're <laughs> checking into a YouTube video. But when you're stuck in your car... You can be all ours for 45 mm -hmm. minutes. If you like what you did see here on the YouTube video, please like or give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our channel because let's face it, it costs you nothing and it takes two seconds, but it means the world to us. So post your score in our comments or do a YouTube video reply because our score for Iron Man 3 was 99. And it was definitely not definitive.